Welcome to the Cross Border Interview Podcast, a podcast about getting out from behind the keyboard and just talking. Each week, we invite a guest or two to sit down and talk about their life and their work. I'm Christopher Brown, your host, and this is the Cross Border Interview Podcast featuring Lisa J. For and, my credits. and you know, we're only an hour into this, but I should have asked you this beforehand. Yeah. What is your name? Because I found yes. three different okay. versions of your name and I'm trying to Let's figure out. talk about it. <laughs> Let's talk about it. So, never met my dad. Don't know who my dad is. His, you know, so I've only known my Japanese heritage, right? Anyhow, so we go into the business, Lisa Yamanaka. And that's fine with me. Um, in fact, I started using my Japanese name, Akimi um, Yamanaka in school, you know, cause whatever. Um, then when that whole, oh, I wish like we could hire her, but she's ethnically ambiguous. She's Japanese. Well, beyond my control, I was eight, 10, until 15, until when I was like, mm -mm, no, guys, I took my father's surname and, and hoping to get more like jobs. And I think that's ridiculous. Like, I've never met this guy. And um, so when I was 18, I took over my business. And Jay actually is a nickname. And when you come from the hood, you never give yourself a nickname. You're given a nickname. And there's like Lisa Nguyen, Lisa Bui, um, and I was Japanese Lisa. So everybody in the hood called me Lisa J. And I was like, screw Boynton, bye Yamanaka. And also like around 18, I started getting like eerie about like what I was putting out there publicly. Um, so, I want to protect my family's surname and all of that. So I'm just like Lisa J. That's it. And do you know what J stands for in the hood? Japanese. Oh, is that really what it is? That's yeah. it. Yeah, I was 13 and I was like, they're like Lisa J. And I was like, oh, watch one day I'm going to legally change it. And like, this is why I hate Wikipedia because I was like, please don't, when I Google Lisa J, please don't include Yamanaka. It's like for privacy, like safety reasons. And um, and they're like, yeah, right. And I was like, yeah, you watch. It's going to be Lisa J. I'm going to represent. I'm going to represent us Asians in the hood. Well, I will make sure that every promotion of this is Lisa J. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God, bless your heart, Chris. Because like when I was doing conventions and I was first coming back, um to do like metabots and everything they're like well you are you are accredited as yabraka or boynton and i was like i know i know but can we just please use jay and like there's been some friction with that so thank you for being so classy about it and like there's a few other guys who um, and gals who've interviewed me who are like really class acts about it it's no big deal this in this day and age to have different names no, it, to go by. Exactly. There, you you respect the person you're interviewing or talking to, and you use the names that they choose, right? Or Thank you. They, they want, right? You don't. I'm not going to call you Sarah. Like it just, it's just one of those things that if you're Lisa J, you're Lisa J. So but I will call you. Do you think Lisa. it's like pretentious or anything? Like I'm no. sorry. Like I wish no. I could have made this decision for myself from jump. I wouldn't have gone through the two other surnames, you know? No, the only issue with like, I, I kind of have the same similar issue. My name's Chris Brown. You, I, I tagged I, you. <laughs> I've tagged you before. I'm like, go Chris Brown. And meanwhile. I'm literally not black. I do not sing. Okay, so. Can you run it, run it. No, I've never met Rihanna. So these are things that we need to work about. So that's why when I introduce myself, it's Christopher Brown, because that's what I go by. So I understand completely why Lisa J is your name, right? So if Lisa J is your name, I will promote you as Lisa J as Thank we're talking you. about this on the show. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. You have mentioned a show that was instrumental in my uh 
college years. I apologize for saying this, but Metabots. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I was a massive fan. I was I was the geek that the nerds and all the like the like like the outcast picked on because I was the guy that liked all these shows. So when I found out you did Metabots, that is the reason I reached out to you because I was for like, real? I need for real? to talk. I need to talk to her. <laughs> what is it that Metabots? What? Because you are from Alberta and there's somebody in New Zealand. Like, it's a big thing there. What is the hype about Metabots? Well, just FYI, I'm originally from Ontario. So I right. got I got Buffalo, New York's Fox News every morning, every weekend. So that's what the show that's what the show was. It was like Digimon, Metabots, Monster <laughs> Ranchers. Like it was my go to. So and for me, it was just an escape. Because yet again, exactly. as, a, as a gay guy in rural Ontario, I got beat up a lot. Oh, Not, baby. To so, their names. Oh, <laughs> I know their <laughs> names. Some okay. of them are not doing well right now, and I'm not trying to throw shade, but. Let's throw that shade, honey. Yeah. No, no, so, no shade. All tea. Exactly. So that's why it was for me. It was an escape and it was something about the characters and Arika, like your character was, I was able to escape. And yet again, I, I was watching Metabots, but I was always rooting for your. Oh, my, my row battles. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. I had a good old time with that. That what I have to say is like, I was there for the first season and then they asked me back for the second season. It took them so long to like, like, just like magic school was, it took them so long to like find out if um, we're going to be back for a second season. And by the time they asked me back for a second season, I had um, already made up my mind to study in New York city. And so Bryn McCauley, took it over and she did a great job, I think. Um, but for me, that one was hardest because it was dubbing. So you yeah. had like those, you know, Arika, those big long diatrabs. Like, so I was like going up and down between the screen and like, I would always try to somewhat memorize like my big long diatrabs. So it was, it was a lot more work than just like magic school bus, like going in and saying the line, how you want it. Cause it's like, has to be time to perfection in the mouths. And yeah. Uh -huh. Where with That's dubbing, awesome. you have such a short period of time because yet again, it's a Japanese show brought over to America. And yeah. sometimes Japanese language is a lot shorter than the big right. long rants and diatribes, as you say, that yeah. is English. So yeah. it probably was hard to do that. And because oh yeah, as a voice uh, actress to do it back and forth because you have to make sure your mouth is timed right with their mouth and it must be just difficult. And you've got the page in front of you and you've got the lines in front of you but then you've got the screen right there so you're I would come out and I would like be dizzy and so because like in Japanese it could be like it's good day. and it's like I'm telling you you're going to be in danger forever and ever and like not even that the mouth would be like open and you have to like say W's or P's and stuff. So like you just have to be creative and on the spot. So yeah, dubbing is like, whew, I give so it. Did you have a voice act? Did you at? Did you have a voice actor, a teacher who came in and taught you how to do that, or was it? We're gonna teach you on the fly. Teach you on the fly. And honestly, looking back at that, I would just be like, if I wasn't raised in this industry, I wouldn't. I would be so scared. Like you go in and you're like dubbing. Okay. Nobody's going to walk you through this. So you've got these, you're in the booth, it's soundproof. You've got these earphones in and depending on how they do it, like you could be on the screen and like, you'll see like, you know, streaming signs. So like by the time they hit the round bump, that's when you speak, or I preferred the beep. So it would be three, two, one. And as soon as I beep, there comes the big long speech I got to give and it's got to be over in three seconds. So it would just, yeah, I had no idea what I was doing, but I had the experience of doing pickup dubbing from all the other shows I did. Okay. So yeah. you were a little bit prepared for that then. So that must yeah. have been interesting to have that background and your, did your fellow actors and actresses have that same background in Metabots with you? I think so. And I think that they have, if they didn't, they're very quick learners because that's the show's premise. It's all dubbing. So yeah. 
Allison Court for sure. Like she's like a gem in the industry. So she knows how to dub with her eyes closed, you know, and then I'm sure Bryn picked up on it and, oh man, I will forever be in awe of whoever played Iki. The main character. Yeah. The main character. That was Samantha. Her name is Samantha and she's a girl. Well, she's that, like, that is the most believable boy voice. Her and Julie Lemieux. I find that so fascinating. Not fascinating in the idea that it's like, oh my God, it's a woman playing a man, but it's so many male characters like Ash Ketchum, Veronica Taylor, yeah. she, a, a woman playing a man. Yet again, Iki, yeah. a, the playing a, man, a, a woman playing a man. Nancy Cartwright, Bart Simpson. Oh like, my God. I, like, I just like you. Yeah. When you were asking me, like, if do you go, I, of course I've tried to do those, but oh, it's so believable too. Cause it's just like, it's all in here and it's in the throat and it's kind of trapped, especially if they're playing a prepubescent boy. It's like, that is talent. Um, uh, as we're wrapping up here, uh, in the last few years, you got the call of the lifetime. We want you back. We want you back as Wanda's mother in the magic school bus rides again. Was it a, was it a homecoming for you to go back into the studio and do that all over again? Uh, yes, it was a homecoming for me. And it was also like passing on to Lindsay Pham, who's the new Wanda. And I got to meet her and I suck. I'm always like, could you send me the picture of us together? And I still have to like post it. I'm, I'm horrible. Sorry, Lindsay. But like, it was so nice for me to see the young actors and being like buckle up kids like it's gonna be a bumpy ride it's gonna be an adventure like just seeing that in them brought so many like feelings of nostalgia back for me um unfortunately like it wasn't recorded at the same studio so like you know i i didn't get to see the sound engineers that i grew up with that taught me tricks of the microphone and all that stuff but it was good to go in and um and it's like full circle, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Did you and give it, her any uh, advice? Any, did you talk to her a little bit and say, it just like you said, buckle up, it's gonna be an enjoyable ride? No, I didn't. Because unless I'm asked, I don't wanna say anything. And it, oh, this interview is coming full circle. Like much. Oh, like, just wait. The ending questions are just going to blow you away. Ah! Or not. Oh and you won't know where to clap. <laughs> <laughs> is anybody out there? Is this thing on? Hello? Um, no. Um, it was full circle. Be and I wouldn't give my advice. And even if it's asked, because like I couldn't tell when I was a child and I had to figure it out on my own. Like the, the, that's what I loved about seeing these new generation of the remake is like, they're gonna find out for themselves what this is all about. It's a, it's a passing on a lineage. Through the magic freaking school bus? Whoever thought? Exactly. Whoever thought? Um. Before no, we I don't wrap. like to give people's advice because everything's so individual. Okay, so sorry. That's true. Before, before, we before, before we wrap up, I want to talk about one thing that in a few interviews that you've given, you said is the crowning achievement of your career so far. I like how you, every time I start a question, you, you're you like, what is he going to ask here? What's going to happen here? <laughs> <laughs> in I am. Two, I'm excited. Yeah, you are a resident of the city of Toronto, the tr uh, tr the big T.O., as we called it out in Newcastle, mm -hmm. Ontario. Um, in 2012, 2010, oh, 2012, I'm assuming, and you know what it already is. Uh, you were awarded by the city of Toronto the Unsung Hero Award. By who? Say his name. <laughs> Should I say his name? The <laughs> Come on. Former Mayor of Toronto, Robert Ford. <laughs> yes! My crowding achievement! He's the man. <laughs> he wasn't there, but um, he had, because he was just sworn in. 
that he was being sworn in that day. I was like, damn it. <laughs> I missed him. Yes. Okay. So yeah, for so advocacy how, work. For advocacy work for mm-hmm. disabled, uh, for, uh, yeah, for disability. Yes. What did that mean to you as a person of disability, of a person who has spent their entire career, and I'm not trying to toot your horn here, but your entire career advocating, being on the soapbox, talking about the issue so openly, what did that mean to you? It was all worth it. That's it, it was all worth it. Is the struggle still there though? The struggle is so real the struggle is so real um but you know you always ask yourself when you're like how am i going to pay this month's rent you know oh my car got towed again like you you know what when you ask yourself daily did i make the right decisions in my life and then something like that it's like it's not everything but it's something to let you know okay bitch you're on the right track (laughs) You did something right. So have you because of your career path, because of being who you are, a voice actress, an actress, a theater actress, uh, have you used that platform to try to advance the cause even more or because some people might not want to, but you've made a career conscious decision to do that? Yeah, Um, I did. I think it's the only reason why. I stepped into local politic arenas and community service, advocacy, activism, because at that time when I joined all of that, when I was 21, um, I didn't realize I had a platform. And then I was in a room full of people and they're like, you have a voice, you should use it for something. So I think it like, it made me realize that like acting is also social work, you know? And I don't know where I got it from. Maybe it's because I got bullied growing up so bad, Um, but I can't stand seeing somebody in pain. It's weird. Like physical, like what we're going through, whatever, it's like these are the cards that dealt us, but somebody being put through pain, you know, and if I and, and, and something unfairness, like it just doesn't compute to me. And like you can say like, oh, I'm a wishful thinker or something or I have like illusions of grandeur, but it just doesn't make sense to me. Inequality when it doesn't have to be there. Like, so, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I want so to add. Well, oh, oh. Can I tell you something? Hey, I would love to, because if you didn't, it'd be a really crappy podcast. (laughs) Um, Okay, 2015. Also, um, it was just the the last production I ever did in Los Angeles and everything. And I was leaving. I was like, this is it. I'm sorry to myself. And anyway, so the last production I did, we got nominated for a Novation Award for Best Ooh. Acting Ensemble. So that's also a highlight of mine. Was that your first uh, nomination for something? Yeah, first, first nomination for something in theater. And it was so hard for me to go. And I wasn't telling anybody because like, I was like really sick because I was not being treated the way I'm being treated right now. So I was like keeping it hidden and like people like, It was really hard leaving Los Angeles because like I had a project lined up and then I had like the right people were starting to like see my work in plays and notice it. And yeah, that was pretty heartbreaking behind. But but when I came back and I was in the hospital, um, I was an inpatient for a few months just getting back my health. And I, I got this like email alert that we had been nominated for best acting ensemble. And it was like, we were up against like center theater group and like huge, huge shows. And we were just like this little tiny black box theater. And it was like the production from hell, like on a, on a technical level, it was the production from hell. And I was just like, well, remember guys, this is the little engine that could. And when we got that nomination, we were all at the party. They were like, you said it, you said this was the little engine that could. I was like, yes. Oh, Jesus. Sorry, um, I toot my horn. 
hey, no, I'm glad you're tooting your own horn. We got to do that these days, right? Because with everything going on in the world right now, you've got to toot your own horn because we aren't doing it publicly anymore because of the pandemic. So toot your horn to your tooting content. (laughs) Exactly. Um, You, uh, I want to make sure this is correct before I ask you this question. Well, I'm going to ask it anyway. Like, you you know, willy nilly. Exactly. Spoken word. Are you a. You're really. Holy Toledo. (laughs) You are thorough, dude. Okay. Thorough. 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 You are thorough as, yes, thoroughbred. What is spoken word to Lisa J? Save my life. Did it? Mm-hmm. How so? Mm-hmm. Like, um, I was like in therapy, just I think like, you know, it's like compounding trauma after compounding trauma. And like, did you ever think about writing? And then I just like started writing one day and and then out these words come and stuff. And it's just like, I don't know what it is, Chris, but it's like, it's better than keeping a journal, you know? And then it introduced me to all of these other poets and stuff like that. And we had this great fashion show where we all brought, like, we all represented a different part of urban Ontario, Toronto. It was the year of the gun, 2005. So I met like this great people like Exodus and Amor. And we put on this fundraiser and it was like um, building bridges, not barriers and stuff, but like not even on a performance level for that. It's just like just writing it and like it's something in it. Like I call it purging on a page because all of that stuff that's inside me and it hurts so much. It's like exorcised after I've written like a good piece out. Yeah, it really, really saved my life. Mentally, really? I think. Mm-hmm. Do you it remember really the first did. time going on the stage and doing it? Yeah. And mm. like, I, like I was, I was like some, some, uh, I don't know, community urban podcast or something. And I was like, yeah, it's my first time. They're like, what? I was scared as heck because there was like a lot of Jamaicans in the crowd and like Rob Ford, I wanted to flex my patois. <laughs> <laughs> but they just welcomed me with open arms and like love. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. I love it. Do you still, do you still get the, well, not right now with everything going on, but. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? Yeah. Do I still do it? Yeah. I think, I think I would, I think I should, you know, the whole time I was in Los Angeles, I didn't. And that says something. I think that's like how high my stress levels were. Like there was just no outpouring of um, emotions or anything. But I think like it's something that I should do. And again, I'm feeling, oh, you got like ESPN or something. Mean girls. I tried just for you. (laughs) No, like how did you know? Like you crawled into my brain and you. I have literally scoured the internet all three of your days to try and find (laughs) it on you. (laughs) Okay, I have. I have to admit, I did Google myself once, and I, I read. I'm like, okay, I think the comments been removed, but like some of the mean shit people have said about me. And I know exactly what it's from. It's fine. It's fine. Great thing We're about, resilient. Great thing about Chris Brown. You Google my name, the rapper comes up. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know how it feels. Oh. Um, it's like, so I, I learned very quickly never to do that again. But yeah, you have anything else about spoken? I don't know. You blew me away. I'm all clustered. <laughs> Up. Well, I, I was going to ask, do you have one off the top of your head right now that you can remember that you've performed? Oh, no. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no. Oh, I have like the oh, man. Oh, I wish I knew I would have read it for you at least. There's one called um, Dis-Ease. And um, it is oh. all about being a performer with disabilities. Well, and that's what I was going to ask you next is where does your where does the where does the word come from for you? This is 
No, uh, just in general, like your spoken word poem. My spoken you know, word? Yeah. Feelings. Where it come? Is it feelings? It is feelings. It's it, just like when I feel like, <clears throat> oh, okay, you, I'm guessing you might have had an anxiety attack before. You? No. <laughs> Gay, homosexual in rural Alberta? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Oh my God, you poor thing. Okay, so it's that feeling that like that like compression, and 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 then I'll just start writing, and then I'll just be like, Bleh! and that whole like tense tension, that pressure gets dissipated, and I literally think it's something that comes through, comes through and out. Um, I don't share it with everybody. The only two I've ever publicly shared were like T-Birds, which I was giving propers to like the OG Toronto hip hop community. Yeah. And Disease, those were like the only two I've ever performed publicly. But the rest, I just write it and I write it for myself. It's nothing like I want anything like back for it. And it feels so good. I don't know why I haven't done it in like the last 10 years. Um, being up on that stage for the first time in a, in a spoken word atmosphere, not a live theater, not a voice acting. Um, it's different because the voice actor, you have a script theater, you have a script, you get directions, voice, uh, uh, um, sorry. Um, spoken okay. word is a little bit more different. It's like you said, you are letting your feelings roll out of you and saying these things that have been on your mind that are going that you that you've gone through Mm -hmm. is that why you might have stopped because sometimes to open up yourself it's hard because even to open up with myself it's been hard so for you to open up with your feelings it must have been hard i think so i think you're right on the button um so being on the stage first part it was yeah like okay so we also put out like a cd like tracks to go along with it and i was recording it and baba and his son junior and his wife they were all there and it's like i cried <laughs> like while i was recording it it was in the sound booth you're right and then to the latter half of your um question is i think that is why i haven't written because like there was so much to come out. Like there was so much stuff happening in LA on a daily, you know, with managing the arthritis without proper medications, and like money, um, realizing, oh, I'm not gonna be here for two years. I'm gonna be here for 10. You know, I think there, that's the thing. And I think that's why it is life saving. Cause maybe if I written more, maybe some different things would have happened but I think like I contained it because it's pain coming out or it's like immense joy coming out I I rarely write through joy I write mostly about pain but um I think it was just too much to handle you're right and I had to be in a safer space to write that you're very um (sighs) cathartic you're very metaphysical so I, I the last thing you just said um I have to ask you the question now. Sure. What brings you joy now? What brings you joy in COVID-19 era? <sighs> you know what? I was thinking, like, I've worked and worked and worked and worked. I went through a really good audition, speaking about auditions that you think you're going to get. And I know for sure I didn't get it. And it would have been a great series to have got and that made me realize and then I'm heading into this COVID-19 play that we're recording and we're filming and plays I put a lot more of myself into it that's why I really wanted to talk to you today because like when I do one play that's all I do yeah um because it's so intense and like being in the zoom realm like it's a new experience too so I want to be uber prepared for it and we're going to be talking about it's called voices of a pandemic and holy crow what some of the people go through in New York City and stuff like that. Um, so is it in New York City that you're going down? No, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying put and it's going to be on Zoom like this. So I don't know what I'm in 
involved oh. in, but I would, wow. yeah. So I'll keep you briefed when it comes. So I'm just like, oh, I don't know what's going on. Um, but what Ooh. she did was she took a whole bunch of voices from actual people. Like some of them are anonymous. I play um, a doctorate student, a doctor student, medical student who was part of the protests in New York City and how she's witnessing like, like crimes against Asians because the leader of that country at the time was calling it China virus and like the spike in Asian hate crimes was going up and stuff. So I'm going to be working on that for like the next few weeks. Wow. Um, and like they've also got um, people who were at the detention centers for like ice and stuff. Like she did a wow. really good job. Yeah, yeah. I'll keep um, I'll keep you in the loop about that. Yeah. So what makes me going happy? Back I to think, that, going back to that question, what makes you happy? Uh, I think my boyfriend. Aww. He makes me happy. Yep, my lion. He makes me happy. Um. Does knowing the fact that you're still getting jobs after all these years, after starting at age three, still make you happy? You know what? When I talk to you and there's this other guy that um, I did this great live stream with, like, you know what? It's going to sound so staged and so like media trained. I was going to say that. That's why I hesitated for so long. But this makes me happy like talking to people and like like oh i've always wanted to touch i'm like i'm so attainable i'm not that hard to reach you know what i mean i will talk to you anytime because i know what it feels like to be that little girl watching sailor moon and escaping for a half an hour before everybody comes home from school and like family crap you know what i mean I get it. I get the need to escape and stuff. And I would love to talk to Sailor Moon. So like, I'm totally here. And like walking down memory lane with you guys, like still getting a call of like people wanting to know what I'm all about. And the fact that they will talk about the other things that are important to me, which are inclusion all across the board for everybody. That makes me happy. It makes me feel like I did something right. Well, I, I can tell you talking for the last almost going on two hours now, we're almost into an hour and 45 minutes here. This is going to be a two parter episode. I, it's my second I think two, so. two parter episode, second one of the season. So thank you very much. You and Mr. Tommy Chung just love to chat. You had Tommy Chung. I'm going I have Tommy Chung coming out. Yeah. Oh, my God. I got to watch that. He, I was flipping through your guests and stuff, and I want to like totally listen to this. He was. <laughs> He's a, <laughs> really? <laughs> no. No. I, you spread Tommy, rumor. Yes, I spread rumors so badly. Tommy Chunk does, do does not smoke weed. He, and is, he doesn't condone it at all. He has <laughs> a whip. <laughs> listen, you want to know something? I've recently gotten into CBD. And I swear uh, by it. I, yeah, I can't. Yeah, I That's can't it. smoke it or anything. Yeah. But I have had the drops and it has helped my, my arthritis. Yeah. But I don't, yeah. Oh, yeah. The so doctors, are you have can't, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yet again, open book here. I, uh, I was in a, uh, I lost a partner in 2010 uh, to a drunk driver. So I used a lot of uh, non over the counter drugs. Yeah. Yes, yeah. self medicating. So now when people offer me pain medications for anything that I do for surgery wise, I say no. Christopher. Hey. <laughs> there are good wow. days and there are bad days. <laughs> You know, also there's some things that like I meet incredible people and I want to interview them too. And I would love to pick, this is such a bad joke. I was going to say, I wanted to pick your pick brain. Your brain. <laughs> hey, you can pick my brain anytime you want. If you can, if you can just get in there and remove it, that'd be greatly appreciated. Oh, babe. I just, uh. Hey, I, Whew. this is what keeps me going. These okay. interviews like this, like interviews where I can just shoot the shit with somebody. And that's what we've done for the last two hours yes. is just shoot the shit and just talk about things, things that 
yet again are interesting to you and i find them so fascinating as a former journalist i find myself just intrigued with just talking to people and i find people don't want to do that anymore really oh they don't want to you talk. know what though i'm so old school i'm so old like i don't know what the young kids are up to these days and really people don't want to talk no more well i guess people it's all the talk. screen time exactly they want to they want to text don't text me call me oh i hate that oh i hate it with i've lost friends because i call them they just yeah answer me. they're like why are you calling me can't you just so text like, me what yeah can't we have like a 20 minute back and forth text yeah wow. i just don't do it so when so this pandemic has been a blessing to me in some sense because everyone's sitting at home doing nothing so they're willing to and chat people it's grounded people people are learning how to communicate again isn't that incredible it's fantastic um but we will wrap up now okay <laughs> lisa i want to thank you so much for doing this this has oh. been literally the besides what happened at work the best Monday that I've had in a so long. So thank you so much for doing this. Christopher, you are such a warrior. I don't know how you do it, but you're amazing. And I'm going to start following your journey because uh, I get to meet so many incredible people. Thank you. I'm glad I got to meet you. It was a blessing. Thank you once again for listening to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. If you love this episode of the Cross Border Interview Podcast, head over to iTunes or wherever you get your podcast and subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. All the links to our social media accounts are in the show notes or visit www.crossborderinterviews.ca. The Cross Border Interview Podcast was produced and edited by Miranda Brown and Associates Incorporated. Be sure to tune in for our next episode of the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Once again, thank you. Bye-bye.